What happens when Paul goes to Corinth? That's what we're going to talk about next in Acts 18. Well, Paul just left Athens and went to a town called Corinth. It's about 45 miles east. And this was a capital in a Roman province. And just like Athens was like the place of intellectual and philosophy and education, Corinth, someone compared it to ancient Las Vegas. It was a rough place. Not similar at all to the Athens. When I was reading about Corinth, it was also like a slam. But if someone was kind of low grade, they were not very educated or very high class, you'd say, oh, they're Corinthian. And so I thought it was funny. So all those years where that car company said it had Corinthian leather, if you knew anything about Corinth, you would not think anything good of it. So Paul went and met Aquila and his wife Priscilla. They were natives of Pontus, which is in Asia Minor on the Black Sea. What happened was, is in 49 AD, Claudius, the emperor, expelled all the Jews. And he didn't care if you were Jewish who believed in Messiah or Jewish who didn't believe in the Messiah. He didn't care. Just all of you Jews get out. And the reason that they said they did this was because it said there was an agitator named Crestus. This was the biographer of Claudius who wrote this. And they think that it was Jesus, Christ, Christus, right? That he misspelled the word. So because, we don't know, but we think the Messianic Jews and the Jews who didn't believe were fighting and causing uproars, Claudius says, I want all of you out. So he expelled them all. And the interesting thing about Priscilla and Aquila is that they were tent makers, and so was Paul. It was common for fathers to teach their sons their trade, and so we think probably that Paul grew up being a tent maker too, but you had to have something that could earn you money. And being a tent maker, really meaning more like a leather worker, because tents were made out of leather, so I could have made all sorts of stuff, meant that he had an occupation that could pay for his way. At that time, we didn't ask for money. We didn't have church buildings where we took up collections in the same way. And so tent making was a really good occupation. They were too. So he hung out with them because they were able to share that trade. It says he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. And then Silas and Timothy, because Paul asked them to come, finally came. It said that Paul was occupied by the word, meaning he probably wasn't doing much tent making because he was busy preaching the word of Jesus. And of course, they reviled him. It said they opposed him. And it said he shook out his garments. And shaking out your garments was like saying, I'm innocent of all these things you're saying, that I, I don't, I reject what you're saying. He says, your blood will be on your own heads. I'm innocent of this. I'm going on from now on to the Gentiles. A lot of people take these passages to mean all Jews or many Jews, when in fact, many of the first Worshippers, disciples were Jewish, and many of the people who believed in Jesus from Paul's preaching were also Jewish. So he's meaning this very specific group of people. So he ended up going to a house of a man who was a worshiper of God, and his house was next door to the synagogue. It says that Crispus was a ruler of the synagogue and believed in the Lord and his entire household. Many other people in Corinth heard and was baptized. So even though that not, didn't sound like it was going particularly well. It did. It, it had fruit. It, it had benefits to it. And it said that at this particular time when Paul was there, it must have been somewhere between autumn of 51 AD to spring of 53, somewhere in that time frame when he also wrote the letter to the Galatians and two letters to Thessalonica. So then Paul says something that's kind of interesting. He has a vision. And the vision says, and this is what's interesting about it, it's in red letters. Don't be afraid, but go on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack you to harm you. I have many in the city who are my people. So Jesus is speaking to Paul still. We know that Paul was a Pharisee, so he had amazing Jewish education. But he turned on a dime at the road to Damascus and knew what to do to, to preach the word of Jesus. But how did he know all this? I mean, Peter spent the three years being with Jesus. Paul, but Jesus is speaking directly to Paul. 
So he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God to them. It says that when Gallo was a proconsul, the Jews decided to attack Paul and say, hey, this man, he's saying things that shouldn't say, that he is contrary to our law, and this is all a matter of redoing. And, and you know, do something about this. And Gallo said, you know, this is not anything to do with me. You know, you have your own complaints. I have nothing to say in it. This is the question of your own words, your own law. See to it yourself. I'm not going to be a judge of any of this. I'm not getting myself involved in any of this. And drove them from, it said, the tribunal area. And then it says it seized the ruler of the synagogue and then beat him in front of the tribunal. And Gallo just didn't care about the whole situation. So this is what gives us our date, because we know Gallo was proconsul, according to coins and Roman inscription, 51 AD. He's the brother of Seneca, who was a famous Stoic philosopher. And Seneca was a tutor to Nero. I think he also, this is a famous guy, and he was a tutor to Nero, which would, I believe, is be Claudius's son. So it gives us a date where we can go from. I think that's what's interesting about the book of Acts and all these things. Is Like I said, I grew up, oh, no, this is real. It's all baloney. You can't do any of this. But Luke gives details to tie people to certain events or certain things. And he wouldn't have to do that. If you don't do that, then you don't have to do it. And Jews at the time, it said, had legal standing as a legitimate religion. But that doesn't mean they had any rights. And they weren't allowed to, do, like we said, not kill people. And just the fact that another religion is making converts, it's not really his business. So he doesn't have to care about any of it because he's about Roman religion. He's about keeping the peace, just like a little bit like Pontius Pilate. I'm just here to make sure you all don't fight you're not fighting, I don't really care. And when he talks about, you know, he says, you have your own laws and your own names, maybe the name he was talking about would be Jesus himself. And we think that this ruler in the synagogue was the person he wrote his letter to the Corinthians, his first letter. So Paul stayed many days later, and then he took leave and set sail for Syria. With him, Priscilla and Aquila. It says that at that point, he had cut his hair and because he was under a vow, there was a Nazarene vow where you never take a drop of alcohol, you don't cut your hair. It is about being very, very holy. And it must have been something like that where he took a vow, but now he, his vow time was over. So he cut his hair and then they went to Ephesus and he left them there. He went to the synagogues, reasoned with the Jews. And when they asked him to stay longer, wow, nice. He declined. But he says, I will return if it's God, God's will. And then he, he left Ephesus. They went to Caesarea. That's going to be the place on the coast, which was the major port shipping area from Rome to other places. And it says he went up and greeted the church, meaning probably went to Jerusalem, up to Jerusalem. And then he went down to Antioch, visiting his first church, the first Christian church outside of the Jewish area. Spent some time there and went through regions of Phrygia and Galatia, strengthening all the disciples. He's visiting all the people that he visited before. And Phrygia is right in kind of that heart of Turkey, sort of the center area, east of Lydia. And he's just visiting all the places that he went to before and strengthening them. There was a Jewish person named Apollos who was from Alexandria. Now, Alexandria is in Egypt, right? The big Library of Alexandria, the big city in Egypt. And it says he was eloquent, competent in the scriptures. So he knew the Bible at that time, scripture is going to be the Jewish Bible well. And he had been instructed. He talked about being a fervent spirit, taught accurately concerning Jesus. We get this idea now at this point that there are kind of holes in what he knows. He knows about Jesus, preach accurately and enthusiastically, but he had a, he had a gap, right? He, he did not understand baptism of the Holy Spirit. He understood the baptism of John. John, being the last Old Testament prophet, was baptizing Jews in the old way. I baptize you with water, but soon you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. His baptism was old, and he didn't know. So he knew bits and pieces of it, 
And Priscilla and Aquila heard him. Someone noted something interesting that previously when we first met Priscilla and Aquila, it was talked about as Aquila and Priscilla. But then at that point, Luke now talks about it, Priscilla and Aquila, meaning she was probably taking a bigger part in what was going on in that church and and explained to him the ways of God, it says, more accurately. And he wished to cross the area of Greece. He wanted to, to go to that area. And it said that people encouraged him. He wrote a letter asking them to welcome him there. And when he arrived, it says he helped those who, through grace, had believed. And he powerfully refuted the Jews in public who disagreed with him, showing by the scripture that Christ, the Messiah, was in fact Jesus. So he, he was a little off in his understanding. But Priscilla, being probably a pretty good teacher, taught him the right ways. And that ends Acts 18. Boy, (laughs) what I'm going to meditate on is the fact that we have people disagreeing with the word of God. We have people agreeing with the word of God. God tells Paul, don't be afraid. And and Paul isn't afraid. He goes really long distances. He talks to all sorts of people. Not only that, he travels almost any distance in that area, right? He worked really hard. I'm tired just thinking about all these miles he's putting on, but he was dedicated. And this impact he's making on Greece, in Athens, and in Corinth, going back and then visiting Jerusalem, then the new church in Antioch, strengthening them. What a gift it was and how amazing it must have been to be there to hear Paul talk. Uh, Boy, I'll meditate on that. And what I'm going to pray about is that I always speak boldly, that I always talk boldness about God. But just like Apollos, sometimes we don't know it all. So I pray that I'm always open to instruction, learning something more, and understanding something I didn't understand before. And what I'm going to share with others, that Paul met other believers, and they joined together, and they would come and go, right? He would dispatch this person here. He would ask them to come to him. He would leave those people at this place so that they would be able to teach. And because Priscilla and Aquila were there to teach, Apollos, who was an enthusiastic guy, got a good education, and then his ministry continued on. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember, read along with me. Tell me how you're doing. You can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I would love to hear your experience going through the Bible slowly. Have a wonderful day day.